This video will show you how to model CPV systems, which are concentrated photovoltaic systems, uh, such as the one here built by Solar Systems in Australia. Here they take a large dish, parabolic in shape, and they focus the sun's rays on a small photovoltaic cell that's much higher efficiency, typically 40% efficiency, uh, as opposed to putting solar uh, cells on the whole mirror which which ends up costing more money so having a small high efficiency cell versus a, a large lower efficiency cells turns out to be a more cost effective system um, and so many people are starting to build systems like this so if we want to model this system uh, we can do it using Patran as our modeler and it uses Cinda MSC Cinda as a solver thermal solver and MSC Thermica, which is developed by Astrium for MSC, and that is uh, a ray tracing uh, orbital heating code that we use for solar heating on Earth. So we're going to first uh, just follow across the menus here. We're going to first build our geometry, which I've already built, and I've created it out of what we call P shapes or par uh, parametric shapes, and we have a paraboloid surface here which is our dish and I'll just uh, come under edit P shape and you can see we have a disk here that's a half meter in diameter and we have this large dish here that's 10 meters in diameter that's a paraboloid in shape and uh, even though this is finite element mesh with these flat finite element shapes um, that's only for the conduction mesh the radiation mesh is truly based on a geometric paraboloid so we'll have the curved surfaces and the rays will bounce off properly to focus on this small target. Then we come to our properties and we can load in from our material library which are Excel based libraries that the user can maintain. We load in our uh, material which uh, is in this case just aluminum so I'm going to go to materials here and you can see we have aluminum that we brought in and SI units and then we also have some coatings uh, and I've created two a black coating which just has an alpha and epsilon the IR emissivity and the UV the visible light uh, absorptivity those are both one so it's going to absorb all the energy and we assign that to that uh, disk right here and then we have a mirror which I'm saying absorbs only 2% of the energy and so the other 98% will be reflected off this mirror and when it reflects instead of being diffuse we're saying 100% of it by setting one here of the infrared and 100% of the UV uh, rays that strike this mirror will bounce off in a specular fashion so we've made it basically a perfect mirror and under our loads we've uh, added a radiation load um, where we've uh, assigned it uh, using what we call a primitive radiation load to this mirror and we've uh, created a radiation mesh of 6 by 12 so 6 in this direction and 12 around and this radiation mesh will be used by our ray tracing code and each of the elements that it uses in that ray tracing code will not be flat plates but they'll be truly curved uh, parabolic shapes because we're using this uh, primitive shapes to put radiation loads on. And then we put a, a similar load on this little disk here and assigned it the, the black coating and we assigned the specular mirror coating to this parabolic dish. And we uh, simply mesh them and this was for our conduction mesh uh, within the dish uh, in the disk and now we can go to analysis. And the first step on analysis is to come into the new environmental simulation module, which lets us simulate solar energy using realistic, um, typical meteorological year weather files. They call them TMY files. And we can get those off the uh, Department of Energy's website. And there's over 2,100 locations around the world. And I could pick North America, and I could pick the United States, and I could pick Arizona and then I could go down and pick Sky Harbor Airport and you see it has TMY3 data and it brings that down as a zip file and then I can um, take that zip file uh, 
and unzip it and then read that EPW file into my simulation here. And now, uh, once I have this data, which is hourly data for every day of the year, a typical day averaged over many years, I can go and either create a design day query where I create an artificial hot or cold day uh, based on a range of dates, or I can just do um, uh, a day query uh, here where I'm, or date range query, where in this case I'm just picking one day from June 19th at midnight to June 19th at midnight again, 24 hours. I could pick a range of dates from like June 1st to September 3rd and, and run a whole range of dates and see how much power gets accumulated uh, in my concentrated uh, little disk where I'm focusing the power. But in this case I'm just going to run one day and I'll apply and close and that will bring all that data into Patreon that I can view in one of my fields um, and it brings in uh, six different arrays this first array I'm going to bring in uh, or look at is the diffuse component and this is the energy that's reflected off the sky and the ground that bounces into uh, this disk due to diffuse radiation due to the atmosphere uh, and also some reflections off the ground uh, we can also uh, get into this mirror here or into the disk and the uh, even though I don't have a local ground model in this model I could create a local ground model with layers uh, but it by default will create what we call a far field ground model so it puts the ground below this and it will compensate for uh, radiation between that ground model and the the dish and you can see uh, this is only about 180 watts per square meter for the diffuse component but the direct component because this was a sunny day is much stronger and it gets up to around a thousand if we look in the table we see it's uh, 909 in the morning it's not as strong because it's going through more atmosphere or in the afternoon but during the peak day it's uh, it's very strong eight nine hundred uh, watts per square meter and uh, we also bring in something called GHI, which is a mathematical combination of the two, and we use that for our far field ground model. And then we um, bring in some ambient uh, temperatures of the air temperature, which you can see is running from 30 to about 40 degrees. We bring in a sky temperature that we actually compute from the EPW file from that TMY data based on wet and dry bulb temperatures and some other uh, algorithms that are part of our our sky model and then we can bring in wind speed uh, meters per second here if we want to do some force convection using our our convection library and some of our uh, force convection equations we could uh, use that wind speed um, for those loads so now that we're we're done with the uh, analysis part and uh, bringing in the the typical data for that day of the year we can run our analysis under the analysis menu uh, and I've already set it up by picking a transient run and I've chosen my Thermica as my radiation solver and said this is an environmental simulation run and I want to run it interactively that will let us uh, look at our uh, our solar results within Thermica so now I'll hit apply Now it will take the model and transfer it to Thermica where it will do the solar simulation part of the model. So once I'm in Thermica, I have my surfaces, my mirror here, and these are true parabolic curve shapes here. So the rays will bounce correctly off of it. I also have my uh, trajectory, which is just a spot on Phoenix as we move uh, t through a 24 hour day uh, in our simulation you can see that's that one spot in the ground. We also uh, have created a, a kinematic file and in this kinematic file uh, we wanted the z-axis which is the one normal to the uh, dish here pointing straight up normal from our dish. We wanted that z-axis uh, to track the sun. So that's our kinematic law and we're going to have the y-axis point to the north. The next tab here is our missions module and we can see our dish here is sitting over uh, Phoenix, Arizona in the United States and this is at nighttime. 
we'll zoom in on it and turn it a little bit of an angle. Um, and as the dish tracks the sun, pointing in the east up till coming up on noontime now, and then as it sets in the west, and you'll see the sun moving across the sky here. As the sun goes down, we can see that our pointing is correct and it's tracking the sun. Now we'll come to our simulation module and we'll run the simulation of the radiation exchange factors, the solar flux, and the bouncing of any energy off the earth that gets reflected into the, the dish. And we'll hit the run button and it takes about uh, three minutes to run. And we can come over to our mission module here now and we can post-process these results by looking at something, for example, absorbed solar flux. And let's come up here to the middle of the day and you don't see much absorbed solar flux uh, in the uh, dish itself because it only has an absorptivity of two. But if we zoom in on the little disk where we're concentrating the energy, you can see that has uh, about 818,000 watts per square meter. So that's very high concentration. Um, we can also look at our ray tracing and see how the rays are bouncing off. And you can see off this quadrant here the rays come in and bounce and as I move outward the rays are hitting the disk at different locations but all, all the rays are focusing on the disk and none of the rays are missing a disk or you'd see rays shooting by it. So the disk is placed just out of the focal point so it distributes the energy over that uh, one half meter square there. So now we're all done with Thermica. We're going to close it and it will now create uh, a Cinda file and run Cinda which it just ran the preprocessor and Cinda will solve for the temperatures which it just finished. And then we can come in to our result menu and we can post process and pick a typical uh, time or do an animation plot and we can see the temperatures. And in this case, we, I can see the temperatures uh, are about uh, one about 1,300 degrees on this small dish where we're, disc where we're focusing. So um, this was for Phoenix location, and it'd be very easy to go into here and change and run it uh, at a different location or a different day when it's cloudy or a range of days by just picking different EPW files and then rerunning. And this concludes this video.